Mr. Beast has finally responded in person in a two hour long interview with Oompaville to all of the allegations made against him in the past few months by Dogpack404. So I'm gonna go over a lot of the things that went unanswered in the last video that I made on this last week because this update to me pretty much ends it all and gives an answer to everything. We're also gonna touch on if Mr. Beast wants to sue Dogpack because he did talk about it. And then I'll also give my thoughts on this whole thing at the end because I have a lot to say. So first we gotta start with the origins. In the summer, Dogpack404 an ex Mr. Beast employee made a bunch of claims against Mr. Beast. And this was done very shortly after Mr. Beast was dealing with the Ava Tyson allegations that happened. Dogpack used the Ava Tyson stuff as an opportunity to get all these claims out there. But in my opinion, all of the claims that were made, all these allegations, are false, completely false and wrong. And I think it's pretty telling that when Mr. Beast finally responds, Dog Pack's Twitter completely silent. When he's always really quick to jump onto everything and explain everything, he's now just silent, dead silent, nothing from him. Very mysterious, but I'm not surprised. So this all finally led to last week where a YouTuber called Soggy Serial disproved like 99% of the claims made against Mr. Beast. Dogpack claimed that Mr. Beast videos are fake. That's just been proven not true. Mr. Beast knowingly hiring an RSO, proven not true. Mr. Beast hiring other really bad employees, also not true. Mr. Beast allowing bad stuff to be sent in group chats, not true. Mr. Beast making illegal lotteries, not true for the majority of them. There, there was an instance where Soggy did claim one of them was illegal, but Mr. Beast touches on everything. So aside from all of that, there were other claims made by Rosanna Pansino about Beast games. And then there were also claims made against Mr. Beast with his crypto stuff and CoffeeZilla made a YouTube video on it, doing a deep dive into Mr. Beast crypto activities. And so all of these things are finally addressed, every single point. I can't think of one thing that didn't get addressed. After making my video on Soggy Serial's video, I had a few questions left that I didn't want to bring up yet because after learning through all of this, I figured, you know, it's probably best not to talk about it until we know what's actually going on. Because yeah, you can speculate, but we've speculated for the last few months and have been proven wrong. So on Oompaville's channel, he's one of the biggest YouTube channels going over this topic. He's actually interviewed Dogpack himself. He posted an in-person interview with Mr. Beast. It's like two and a half hours long. I listened to the whole thing shortly after it came out and it's so shocking to see the actual truth that it just makes Dogpack seem completely insane. I'm not gonna reiterate every single claim because we did that in the last video. And basically, Mr. Beast endorses that video. He's commented on that video. He also commented on my video going over it. So we're just gonna go over the main claims that Mr. Beast brought up in this interview, as well as things that we didn't get addressed yet. So first off, the whole no doesn't mean no thing in Mr. Beast document. We did get confirmation in Soggy Serial's video that Mr. Beast didn't fully write it. It was also written by his hiring manager, where it's not about messing up consent, it's more about like conviction and what you want. Like there's always more that you can try to do to get what you want. And Mr. Beast expanded on it in this interview. And it's actually something that's even more understandable than we even thought. It makes sense. The gist of why we had a section that said no does not mean no is because we do I don't know if anyone's ever seen our videos, crazy things that have never been done before, right? Come to me and they go, Jimmy, they said, no, we can't do it. The video's not possible. And it's like, okay, well, of course they're gonna say no because everything we do has never been done before. And hard no will 50% of the time turn into, oh, well, yeah, actually we can do it if you're willing to spend a little extra money or whatever. So that was me trying to educate my employees on that. So he basically talks about how things that he has to do at his company are just insane for YouTube videos. And so he gave an example of cranes. If you need cranes for a video, they're probably gonna say no for the request he's made. So the first initial no doesn't mean no, you have to expand on what's going on. And so he brought up like, if you offer to pay like five times the price or say that you'll like pay the, the other customers at that company to like rebook their cranes, like that makes sense. If, if you're willing to go to that extreme, obviously they'll be like, oh, if you're willing to do that, you're willing to pay that much more money, then yeah, sure. Like it makes a lot more sense why no wouldn't mean no. And so for him, this whole manual thing he explains is just like a handbook for trying to get these tasks done because you know, it's a big company. He can't talk to everyone and teach them how to do all this. So that makes a lot of sense. Next up, they went over to CGI and he says, yeah, he uses CGI for some things. Like if he wants to, to make certain things darker or extend a set or something. Black, but it, it looks a little awful. Just like darken it out in post. Like that's like majority of what we do or sometimes we'll extend a set. Oh, yeah, I was thinking like, maybe just time stamping in the description when we do. That's interesting. Uh, and in my opinion, oftentimes when he does use CGI, it's very, very noticeable. Like when he blows up the freaking earth, 
We, he's not actually blowing up the earth. It's very easy to know that. But he did say that he might put like some sort of notifier to know when you're looking at CGI or make better behind the scenes stuff. Like that, that would be cool. I don't think it's necessary at all. He doesn't owe anyone that in my opinion. If you want to use CGI, then go for it. Like there's a kind of a loose definition with what CGI is. Oompaville even brought up like, if you put text on the screen, people might consider that CGI because it's computer generated images, right? It's fake, it's made by a computer. So any editing is technically CGI. You don't have to say, oh yeah, I, I use CGI when it's obvious. You're using visuals like, like duh. So I think that was hard to do, and I think that claim, even if he did use CGI the whole time for certain things, it's not like he's using it for the main thing of the video. If he's not actually giving away a million dollars in his CGI money, then yeah, that would be like, that would be pretty bad. Or if he's not actually shredding a Lamborghini, the whole Lamborghini being shredded is all CGI. Like, yeah, that, that's the main portion of the video. But he doesn't do that. So it doesn't matter. Like, it's so, it's such a stupid thing to claim. Next up is the whole fake hospitals thing. So this is a very big one that was unaddressed in the whole Soggy Serial video. And this is one that I really wanted an answer for. So there was this Beast Philanthropy video where in the video, you know, they did their philanthropy stuff and there was this one shot showing that like the hospital was like torn down, you know, it, it wasn't there and that was the before shot and then the after kind of makes it seem like they built the hospital. And so Mr. Beast admits in this video, in this interview, that that was actually an editing mistake. Not so much a mistake, but it was done by the editors and he admits that, yeah, it is a pretty bad mistake. Honestly, truthful. Dumb mistake. Um, at the start of one of our Beast Philanthropy videos, they were trying to show what uh, this like building looked like in the past. And in the past, that hospital wasn't there. And this was just like a small part of the, it was, this isn't even like the point of the video was that we built this hospital or whatever. There was just a shot at the beginning. But some people saw that and thought we did build it, which is not the intention. When I saw that, I, I talked to the editors. I was like, come on. He does go into how this has actually impacted the philanthropy stuff. And it can be proven that his channel does do real philanthropy work, which is charity work, right? But he is saying that all these titles and stuff going over this editing piece uh, have actually damaged the brand. And I, I will say I did make a video on this, of course, but it is a pretty big thing to do to claim you did something that you didn't do. I know based on his explanation how it wasn't the intention. It wasn't even his idea. Some editor did it. He didn't even know it happened. And he has a huge team, right? I, I get it. I, I get it. Personally, I thought he reviews all the videos. But I don't know. But regardless of that, he does explain and prove in the description that, yeah, the entire philanthropy stuff is real charity work. It's not fake. It actually helps a lot of people across the world. So that whole scenario, it is not good to do that. And they've learned from it. But it's not as bad as everyone thought. Next up, a more recent thing that happened was YouTube being reached out by Mr. Beast, you know, once Soggy Serial made the original video, creators got a bunch of messages from Jimmy saying to, you know, could you cover this? And Soggy went on to Twitter to explain that, you know, he felt kind of used by Mr. Beast. He didn't like that Jimmy did that when he should be speaking out about it like himself. And Mr. Beast actually touched on a claim like this. So, you know, he's actually touching on to everything. And, you know, Oompaville asked the right questions. I was even thinking to myself, if I were to interview Mr. Beast, I would hit on everything so there's nothing left <laughs> unsaid, you know? That's the right way to do it. And they, they did it. But there are, are a lot of things in there that he disproved and yeah, I mean, I got excited and shot it over to a bunch of creators who covered the false information. And was just like, look, I, I, I could see how, you know, that looks like I'm hiding behind it. So this is his response. It's basically just that, like, yeah, he did it. He still always intended to talk about it, but yeah, he, he did it. Maybe not the best choice, but honestly, Personally, I don't think it's bad at all to reach out to creators to do this. Especially creators that you know have talked about misinformation or disinformation that Jimmy talks about. Just false allegations. It's totally fine in my opinion to go to creators that you know have covered the fake stuff and be like, hey, could you talk about this since you talked about that actually incorrect stuff, you know? I don't think that's bad at all, honestly. The only thing that I think he should have done first before to messaging all these creators is to like, talk about it himself. I do think that is what everyone wanted. Right away, it's just a response from himself. But he did talk about, at the very start of the video, the first thing he talked about is the reason why he didn't talk about all these claims. And we did hit on this as well. The Ava Tyson stuff happened, Mr. B's launched an investigation, 
and then the dog pack stuff happened. But because there was an investigation, he couldn't talk about what was going on. He couldn't respond to anything. He talks about it in the video. He went with a super like high up, very expensive company to do this internal investigation. And they, they searched through a lot of messages and a lot of devices and a lot of sources at the company. And Mr. Beast was, he was told he could not talk about any of this while this investigation was going on. So all the dog pack claims, he was just not allowed to talk about for months. Part of that investigation is they recommended that I not talk about drama or really do anything online because it might per influence, you know, witnesses or any people they might interview or ex-employees. So uh, it's a little unfortunate because I told them, okay, I, you know, I'll wait till the investigation is over. And I believe that was literally like a week before the dog pack video came out. In my head, it was gonna last like two or three weeks. It ended up taking a couple months. I told Quinn Emanuel that, you know, to protect the integrity, I would, I wouldn't do anything or engage any of this drama. And I mean, it's only been a couple weeks since Mr. Beast tweeted about the results of the investigation, meaning it took months and months where he couldn't talk about anything at all. So Dog Pack just had free range <laughs> to go and spread a lot of false accusations against Mr. Beast and his company. That's crazy. And Jimmy couldn't do anything about it. He sent season desists, but he couldn't directly talk about anything because he was forbidden to, you know, when he's under investigation. That's like really unfortunate. Now, yes, he did have a little bit of time between the investigation concluding and now, but in between that, he was just like figuring out what to do. If it, I mean, I would get it too. If I were him, I feel like the damage is done, you know? It's been months of this, I didn't say anything. How the heck am I gonna respond to this? So Soggy Zero finally making a video about it would be like, okay, you know, thank God someone sees it. Uh, maybe people should talk about this while I try to work on responding to it. I totally get it. People seem to think Mr. Beast is evil, but he's just like a person. He's not some crazy guy. Like I would relate to that too. I wouldn't know what the heck to do after all that time and not being able to say anything. How would you address it after people just don't want to listen? Because that's what you've seen online. People don't want to listen. And so that's what we go into next. The whole Reddit suppressing information and people not wanting to talk about things that are contrary to, you know, just hating on Mr. Beast. So he would actually, he talked about in the interview how he would reach out to creators and be like, hey, can you talk about this? This is completely false. And they just wouldn't because it's not cool to, you know, defend Mr. Beast. If he reached out to me, I would have covered it right away. One of them literally just said to me like, well, it's not really cool to like you or defend you right now. So I don't really care whether or not it's true or I don't want to take the video down because then people are gonna think I'm controlled opposition. I was like, whoa. Whenever there was an update to the situation where Dogpack got something wrong, I would cover it in the next video right away. Especially if it was really big, I would make a video like the next day. And then he talks about and he provided proof in the description of this interview uh, that the YouTube drama subreddit was really suppressing actual things defending Mr. Beast and that's really scummy of that subreddit. That's insane because I see my video on there. There's a post sharing my video covering the soggy cereal stuff and it's not, it, it got removed. When it's a video about like claims that have got debunked and it got removed, that's really sneaky. What are the mods doing on there? That's like, I'm, I'm shocked. That's pretty bad. You know, they're allowing the subreddit to just keep spreading false stuff while suppressing the real claim. Like that's crazy. So he talked about that and that would go back into like not knowing what to do. If you see all these people and all these spaces online, not wanting to hear the real truth and just wanting to focus on hating you, obviously you wouldn't know how to respond. Like, like what do you do? I totally get it. I totally get it. Next up, he went into the Lunchly stuff. It wasn't really that important. There's no recall. I mean, that, that's been right. set. Every single Lunchly with cheese meat is USDA inspected. There is no mold when it leaves our factory. He just talked about like, yeah, sometimes there's mold in products and it's always something you can't control because you never know what's gonna happen to the product after you ship it. That makes sense to me. It's like that for any food item. I still don't like Logan Paul though. Making that clear. Suing CoffeeZilla, that's really scummy of you, Logan. You, crypto scammer. Next up, hiring the RSO he talked about, Delaware. He basically says the exact same thing in the previous video with Soggy Cereal. That is not true. His name was just Delaware. I didn't, you know, call him Delaware to make fun of him or anything. He was in a video before I hired him at working at Best Buy wearing a name tag that said Delaware. Mm -hmm. And like that was public information. And like, you know, anyone could have saw that. I Where he did not know he was hiring an RSO intentionally. Because yeah, if Best Buy vets him, I would also assume the same thing that yeah, Best Buy would have done background checks, so why would I need to, you know? Which, yeah, isn't good, and 
it's definitely something that he did wrong, but he was also really young. I completely understand it. I would have done the same thing at 19. Like, yeah, he still did wrong there, but he's he's human, you know? Next up, he also talked about the whole Jake Weddle situation. But Bailey and Susie, on day 20 of a 100-day trap together, I offered to turn the lights off for part of their prize pool. Uh, and they said, no, wasn't, I mean, I'm sure it was difficult, but it wasn't like that big of a difficulty for them. What I'm trying to say is you never know how someone's gonna react to something, right? It's impossible to fully predict. And so that's uh, one of these variables of these challenges, which is why we give people the ability to quit, you know what I mean? Or to leave at any point. And yeah, Mr. Beast went over how people respond to the challenges differently. Like there were some people in other challenges where they didn't care about the lights being left on. And so there were a lot of dramatic comments made, which yeah, his experience on set was really shocking and disturbing, but it was also voluntary. And so he hits into that, basically the same thing that happened in Soggy's video. Next up is Beast Games and that coverage. And so yeah, he talks about how there were issues on set. Uh, five people are in a lawsuit. He can't really talk about the details with that because it's a lawsuit, right? But he did go into how there was this whole thing that happened during filming. During the CrowdStrike accident. And so as we're like eliminating hundreds of people and trying to get them home, airports all across America are down. Hotel room keys aren't working. and that created a lot of confusion and, and that caused a lot of problems in our systems and and it was actually around the world where a lot of just services died airports were down airplanes were delayed like operating systems just failed computers failed across the world and it was pretty bad and so that happened during filming and there were complications and, and also he did actually talk about people not getting uh feminine products on time at beast games basically the explanation was it was a person who was allergic to the products they had and so obviously, yeah, it would have been delayed because they'd have to go get products that they could actually use that they're not allergic to. There was one woman who was allergic to the feminine care products and we didn't have allergen free ones like tampons and pads. She told someone, I don't know who she told, I haven't been able to find it, but that she was allergic and they didn't obviously do the logical thing, which is tell us or just drive to the local Walmart and buy some and give it to her. And so she wasn't able to get, you know, feminine care products in a reasonable amount of time, which is unacceptable. Like people have claimed like we didn't use unions. That was just a flat out lie. We did use unions, like that there are dozens of broken bones. I, after like that claim came out, like we literally called 1950 contestants of the 2000, we couldn't get a hold of all 2000. I couldn't find a single broken bone. And that just goes into how many employees are at Mr. Beast. And so that's a segue into the HR topic that he went over. How it's really hard to not have something bad happen at a company where you have hundreds of employees and then you have hundreds of like subcontractors and people that you hire to work on things like it's inevitable unfortunately with a huge company that something bad is going to happen companies at this size like you know you can't ever guarantee that every interaction everyone's going to have is always going to be positive with each other you know what i mean that's just <laughs> impossible so any company of this size there's always going to be some problem someone has so yeah anything bad that could have happened on set would also echo that there's so many people working there, it's hard to control what goes on, which I totally get. Now, we also still don't really fully know the details, but I feel really <laughs> way more calm about that. Now, the next thing that was also unanswered that I actually forgot to mention in the last video, I, I really, once I uploaded, I was like, ah, I forgot about that. It was the whole poster in Jimmy's place that was Ava's poster, of course but it was put up on the wall and it was pretty bad artwork. But Jimmy's uh, response to that is basically just that his apartment had a lot of anime posters and so that's what he thought it was. A bunch of anime posters and things like that on our wall in the house. One day, Ava put up this poster that was like an animated character. Admittedly, it's, it was a, a weird image. I didn't know who made it. You know, I just kind of assumed it was a meme. To be honest, I, I didn't really think too much of it because we just had like a lot of anime posters and things up and it was an animated character um, that was clothed. The artwork that was done, it's not something anyone should own, but it still was clothed. And so I understand it was Ava's poster, first of all, and him not knowing what the heck it is, he's not gonna cross-reference what the heck the poster is. You're not gonna Google image search. You're just gonna assume, okay, it's a poster of a show or something. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't really question it unless it was obviously terrible, which you know, it, it wasn't, it was clothed. The next thing is the whole illegal lotteries. Mr. Beast is currently reviewing the one that Soggy Siro claimed was still illegal. He's going through old footage and stuff. He, do, he said he personally doesn't think it was illegal, uh, but you know, he's still going through the footage there. I don't think we did. I have people looking into it and like trying to pull the footage and, and figure it out. You know, he disproved the two. Uh, if people want a refund or think for whatever reason, like we did something wrong, like I'll send you a, 
a link that you can just put in the description where they can get a refund. Maybe just throw it on the screen here. He is offering refunds to anyone who bought shirts within this time frame. And I actually think my shirt order would fit in there. And I mean, I do feel misled having bought that. So I guess that that's not bad at all. The final thing we're gonna talk about is the crypto situation. This in recent events is probably the one people want the answers to the most now uh, that things have been debunked with Soggy Serial. So the crypto stuff, he basically goes over how the wallet was completely not managed by Jimmy and was managed by a company. So he pretty much hammers it into the response he gave CoffeeZilla, which is that it was entirely managed by someone else, doesn't know what's going on, and that he does not have knowledge of insider trading. The only thing that he knew was, yeah, the call with Logan Paul, where they went on a call with Gary V and they were like, yeah, buy, buy this. I think it was V Friends, but buy V Friends. And so Jimmy says he phoned up the guy managing his wallet and he was like, oh, I heard V Friends is good. You should get V Friends. Now, is that insider trading? We will never know what the call was about. It does sound a little bit suspicious, but going based on what Jimmy said here, it does sound like he was just told by a friend to buy something and so he did it. I didn't take what punks to buy or anything. Gary V, like I said on that podcast, called me and a bunch of other people said crypto punks were the next big thing i thought it was pretty crazy but you know the first thing i did right after that is just called the guy in charge of the fund uh who invested my money and just said hey gary v seemed very passionate about these punks you should look into it if it makes sense buy it you know he did the research picked what punks to buy bought them. I, i've never bought one like me personally just from what i've heard from this story it doesn't feel like insider information after knowing all of that because now it just feels like a friend giving a recommendation on what to buy then there was also super where jimmy was actually in a tweet talking about super he was like super question mark talking about is this thing gonna blow up this coin and so his response to Upaville about that one was simply that it was a response to the actual owner of super like the creator that was the owner of super the guy who made the coin and i just when scrolling through twitter just replied super to his tweet. I did not tell people to buy super or anything. I just replied super. And I know the next thing where people are gonna go, but this was a plan coordinated thing. It wasn't, it's not like I'm on the phone with the people managing the crypto fund going, hey, I'm about to reply super to this tweet. I just was scrolling Twitter and I replied super. A lot of people who do this kind of stuff do it on low volume coins that like, you know, sell a hundred thousand dollars a day. So it actually dramatically pumps it and blah, blah. Super is like the hundredth big crypt, biggest crypto coin out there. Super is like a legit coin. That tweet didn't move the needle for shit or anything. It's averaging it, so there's literally no correlation to my just little response to a tweet and what the fun was doing. Which yes, as a creator, you do have to have responsibility and not promote things like that because people will think you're endorsing it. Unfortunately, that's how it works, but I guess he just didn't think about that. It is dumb on his part, but honestly, it doesn't seem malicious. He did have Super in his portfolio, but Jimmy says there's like thousands of transactions that obviously took place when he was off doing something else. So it's like, yeah, he said that tweet and he owned the coin, but it wasn't a pump and dump. So yeah, it looks pretty bad, but I don't think that's illegal at all or malicious. Now the final one is the charity crypto. And this is one that did seem like the worst allegation in the CoffeeZilla video where they teamed up with Team C's. And so this charity coin, Mr. Beast had like a stake in and it was only supposed to go for two months, but they sold within less than two months. And so Jimmy talks about why that happened. And it was, again, not Jimmy managing the wallet. It was someone else managing the wallet. And they talked about this charity crypto being super just inactive. Only one person bought one of the things. Uh, Eternity gave us NFTs to auction off for Team C's. Only one sold after like, uh, whatever, a day, I believe, and that was it. And then, yeah, it looks like the fund sold like 27 days later. I mean, honestly, the charity auction was a bomb. It only raised $7,000. The other ones weren't selling, no one cared. So there was no selling of NFTs to raise money for charity anywhere near where the fund was selling before or after. Uh, people could technically still have bought those NFTs, but no one did because it just basically, no one cared. Um, so I just don't feel like that's a, a fair criticism. Like they gave Team C's some NFTs to raise money, one sold, no one cared, and then it just basically died. And then uh, just under a month later, yeah, it looks like the fund sold some tokens, completely unrelated. So yeah, it does look bad doing that, but knowing the context of that, it does seem a lot better than what was originally thought. I still do think it's bad, and it's probably the worst thing out of everything that I can think of. Because it feels like every single claim has just been completely debunked in a way that makes sense and is like, oh, we were led to believe a lot of fake accusations from mostly Dogpack. Now moving on to Mr. Beast suing Dogpack, he pretty much confirms he does plan to do that. And I think he should because all of this disinformation 
completely false allegations. You can't be making that type of stuff. It severely damages your brand. It's just unfortunate. Like, I don't want to be put in this situation, but probably going to have to. I mean, it's just, it's just, I mean, what do you do if someone's just spreading misinformation about you and, you know, just causing harm to your business? They're Plan. not done drafting it up, but once they're done, more than likely, yeah. Yeah, that's I mean, uh, I, Every law firm I've talked to, they're like, this will be the easiest win they've ever seen in their life. His channel has been dragged through the mud for the last few months, and it was all because of countless accusations that were completely false. So I'm glad he's suing him. He deserves it. So now I want to get into my final thoughts here. I am just so shocked that all of this actually is being reversed. You know, when I first started covering this, it seems so real that there's no way all these claims could be reverted. And then it all did get reverted. And so I've learned a good lesson here about intuition because the whole time I did feel like something was off about Dogpack and that a lot of this is just not the full truth. And I, it's a good lesson for me to learn to really trust that intuition because it's never been wrong. I find. My first video about the dog pack stuff was really delayed because I didn't want to talk about it. You know, it just felt wrong to do it with that intuition, that gut feeling that it was just inaccurate. But I got a lot of pressure to talk about it and, you know, making so many Mr. Beast videos in the past, it felt like I had to at that point. And it all turned out to be false and I feel really bad for covering all this. I've already made, I, th I think most of the videos unlisted. Uh, if they're not now, they will be completely unlisted now. Just because I don't feel right having all these false claims up. Some YouTube advice to grow that is really good is to milk situations or topics. You know, videos that do well, you milk it and you make something similar and people will love it. But I don't agree on milking situations like this. I didn't want to keep making Mr. Beast videos like this. So I would wait for drama to happen and then cover it in a longer video and then that's it. I didn't want to make like a hundred videos talking about this topic because it's just uncomfortable to film about negativity like this. And then knowing after all this time that Dog Pack was just manipulating everyone and that it was all fake, it's like, okay, what's the point in talking about this stuff? So I'm, I'm gonna have to take a little while here and really think about what I want to do on this channel moving forward. I don't even know if I want to cover YouTube news from now on. You know what I mean? Like, it's, th it's that bad. I just want to say to Jimmy, I don't think he's watching at all, but I'm really sorry about covering all this stuff. And I should have done more research, obviously. So, moving forward on the channel, I don't know what kind of content I'm going to make regarding news. This channel has grown and changed a lot. I'm still, of course, going to do commentary and talking about weird channels on YouTube. I don't have plans to change all that just yet. But as for news, if it's not positive news or talking about maybe a corporation like YouTube or Google, then I don't know if I'm going to cover it, at least not for a while. It feels really uncomfortable to talk about stuff knowing that it's now just all been disproven. And then when you do talk about it, the last video that I made on all of this, I got so many comments saying, yeah, time works, I'm unsubscribing from you. You're just a Mr. Beast glazer. Or wow, you're really sucking the Mr. Beast. Like what, what are you guys talking about? And so to those comments, my reaction was like, yes, please unsubscribe. I don't want these people around who just want negativity and don't want to hear the truth. It's not bad to make a video defending someone that you've revealed to be innocent in most cases. I'm not saying Mr. Beast is 100% a good guy, but is anyone 100% a good guy, you know? He just has so much spotlight because he's the biggest YouTuber. People online, influencers and creators and whatever, they all have a spotlight, but the average person, I do like to believe, is inherently good. So it just feels really weird to only want to cover the negativity and make news videos about just people being human, you know? It's normal as a human to mess up, it happens. So I don't know, I, I don't know what to do going forward from here, let me know your thoughts. I'm just glad it's over. So thank you guys for watching, fly on.